This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 948, Eight Changes I Experienced After Giving Up TV by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading blogs to you, mostly, but sometimes books, anything that I think will help you optimize your life. Today's post being from Steve Pavlina. But before we get to the post, thank you to Babbel for their support. I wish I had Babbel when I was learning Spanish in school because I did four years of it, but still didn't feel fluent after. Babbel's lessons are designed to get you speaking confidently in your new language and actually remember what you learn. And you can try Babbel for free. Go to babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com or download the app to try it for free at babbel.com. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Eight Changes I Experienced After Giving Up TV by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. In June, I decided to do a 30-day trial of no TV watching. DVDs were okay, but I wasn't gonna watch any regular programming or cable shows or tape anything with my DVR. At the end of the 30-day trial, I was pleased with the results, so I kept going. Now that it's been over 60 days, I thought I'd share my observations on life without TV. Number one, Becoming more aware of the TV's presence. The rest of my family didn't join me in this experiment, so there was still some TV viewing in our home. When I stopped watching TV, I became much more aware of the TV's presence when others were watching it. I began finding the TV a noisy nuisance, and I started encouraging the rest of the family to keep the TV turned off during mealtimes. Number two, noticing TV's presence outside the home. When I went to the gym, I really began noticing all the video monitors and TVs. My gym has flat panel TVs with individual remotes at most of the cardio exercise stations. I never liked watching TV while exercising, so I always turned mine off. I listened to podcasts instead, but I began noticing how many other people in the gym would watch TV. Many of those people literally looked hypnotized. The whole thing started creeping me out like I was exercising with a bunch of mass hypnotized zombies who came to ingest their social conditioning for the day. It reminded me of the movie, The Island. Number three, saving time. I used to watch recorded shows during lunch. So without the TV, I would eat lunch faster, often finishing in 10 to 20 minutes instead of 30 to 60. This gave me some extra time in the middle of my day, which I liked. With no TV in the evenings, I started reading more, going out more, and spending more time talking to Aaron. I found all of these more enjoyable than watching TV. Number four, expanding socially. I'm not exactly sure why, but I felt a compulsion to expand socially, which seemed to grow stronger the longer I went without TV. I just wanted to spend more time with real people, especially face-to-face. I started talking on the phone more, going to more social outings, and accepting more dinner and lunch invitations. I also accepted a couple of new speaking engagements that I was previously hesitant to accept. I find myself wanting to do something socially almost every day now. Today, Aaron and I enjoyed an almost three-hour lunch with a local entrepreneur couple. Tonight, we have our weekly PSI discussion group. Tomorrow morning, I'm playing disc golf with a friend. Friday, I'm attending a weekly self-improvement group meeting. Saturday, Aaron and I are attending a four-hour Reiki workshop, and then we're going to see a live show with the kids. I've always enjoyed social activities, but my social calendar has filled in a lot more lately, and I'm really loving this expansion. I think excessive internet socialization can have the same negative impact as TV. It fills a void, but there's just no substitute for talking to people face-to-face. No TV show can compete with a stimulating conversation. Number five, seeking higher quality entertainment. TV also fills a desire for entertainment. With the TV turned off, I finally woke up to the thought, wait a minute here. I'm living in Las Vegas and I've only seen a fraction of the shows here. So I said to Aaron, let's go see some shows on the Strip. Over the next few months, we plan to see a lot more of the wonderful shows in town. I'm especially looking forward to seeing Cirque du Soleil's O. When I compare a live Vegas show to watching TV, TV just can't compete. Number six, feeling more ambitious. Over the past couple months, I've been feeling a lot more ambitious about growing my business and especially reaching out to help more people. I accepted a few more speaking engagements and I'm open to accepting more. Recently, I've been talking to publishers about possible book deals and other companies about various partnering opportunities. I'm also planning to start offering public workshops. 
These ideas were always part of my original plan, but now they're really starting to come together. Number seven, spending less time on the computer. Giving up TV made me question how much time I spend in front of my PC. I've been cutting back on my online activities and tackling more offline projects, such as finally upgrading my pathetic office furniture. And as previously mentioned, I'm going out a lot more. Spending a whole day at my desk just doesn't feel as comfortable anymore. I have a much stronger urge to go outside or at least to get away from my desk. Number eight, not missing TV. I found this a surprisingly easy habit to break. I just went cold turkey instead of gradually weaning myself and I perceived no withdrawal symptoms. You might think giving up TV means sacrifice, but in my experience, it's just the opposite. Watching TV means sacrificing social outings, better forms of entertainment, and of course, time. I'm really glad to have made this change. In terms of results, it's right up there with becoming an early riser. You just listened to the post titled, Eight Changes I Experienced After Giving Up TV by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. This reminds me of a funny assignment I got in college. I'll tell you about that in a sec, but first, thank you again to Babbel for their support. You can learn Spanish, French, Italian, German, Russian, Swedish, and more. And using Babbel, you can be speaking your new language within weeks. I wish I had it in high school. I actually took some Spanish starting in elementary school, then four years in high school, even a little in college, but I've forgotten most of it. Babbel's lessons are designed to get you speaking confidently in your new language, and here's the key, actually remember what you learn through interactive dialogues and more. It's really easy to get started. I'm currently trying it. And you can try Babbel for free. Go to babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Or again, download the app to try it for free at babbel.com. So speaking of school and college, my favorite professor gave us an assignment to watch TV for 10 minutes. Now get this, with the TV off. Obviously, all the students were like, what the heck? But it's actually enlightening. Such a strange experience. We're essentially doing the same thing when we watch a TV program, taking away the fact that we're consuming content. We're just staring at a box. At least with podcasting, you can walk or drive, or exercise, whatever, while you're taking in that content. TV, though, it's more rare for us to be doing those things at the same time. We're just sitting, staring at a box. It's actually really difficult to do it for 10 minutes without feeling super awkward. And if you do this experiment and someone walks in and catches you watching the TV with it off, I'm sure they'll be very confused. But you can simply say, I'm watching the TV. (laughs) See how that goes for you. But I'll leave it there for today. I hope you're having a great day and I'll be back tomorrow reading to you where your optimal life awaits.